Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today we are going to look at the Axie Infinity uh, token, symbol AXS. And I was just pulling it back to see how much data I could find. I'm using uh, TradingView and they're calculating this versus the US dollar. And this is using uh, data from Binance. So, and uh, before I get started, today is August the 15th. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do go ahead and subscribe. It really does help me out. And I appreciate all the likes and the uh, comments I've gotten. And also, if this is one of the tokens that you currently own or have been looking at, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think, because this I'm totally new to this. So uh, to this one, and we're just going to go ahead and take a look at uh, what's going on with a few technical things. So um, we don't have a full year's worth of data. And I looked at a couple of other um, uh, rendition, you know, versions versus the dollar. And again, uh, didn't have uh, very much data to go from. So we're just going to use what we have and basically follow the same process we always do. Didn't mean to hit compare. We're just going to go ahead and add, add in some moving averages to start this off. And you guys know by now that I like to use the 10 day, the 20 and the 60 to start off my analysis. And for those of you who are new to technical analysis, uh, feel free in the link to this video or in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to a video I made that is basically a mini tutorial on technical analysis. It explains all of the indicators that I use in these videos and uh, hopefully we'll give you an idea of how to get started uh, using this for your own trading. So you can see, obviously, I mean, with this sort of rise that we've gotten uh, during the month of July and, and, and uh, start of August, even uh, up to mid August where we are now, um, obviously going to be bullish at the daily. I'm expecting that to change a little bit when we switch over to the uh, to the lower time frame. So let's go to the one hour. I like using different time frames because they allow you to take the same data and give you a different perspective. It's like looking at a room like you always do upright versus tilting your head or turning upside down. This sort of um, uh, flipping the market upside down can really help. And certainly in the shorter time frames, for those of you that are looking for day trades or swing trades that might last a day or two, you're you should be living for sure living in the shorter time frame so here is the hourly so on the hourly completely different right um we had a nice uh we had a crossover of both the green which is our 10 period and the red which is our 20. both of those have crossed over to the point where now we are definitely in a bearish market on the on the one hour time frame now the caveat here of course is that you compare these periods to other periods after a big up move uh, just so you can uh, put things once again in perspective it's all about perspective in life right at the 30 minute time frame i don't know if you guys can see that we have a bit of consolidation the 10 period is higher than the 20 uh, but lower than the 60 which means that all three moving averages are not in line so i would call it a period of consolidation rather than uh, saying it's a, uh, a continuation of a, of, of a bear or a bull market. And also at the 15 minute level, we, uh, you can see how much this really does, uh, you know, the 10 and the 20 period at the 15 minute level really do cross back and forth over each other. So it's a little harder to use in this. But again, if you pair it with another time frame, this can become very valuable information for you. So right now, we are, and I'm going to use the numbers actually over, over uh, in the upper left hand corner over here. So if I put my cursor to, uh, back to the end of the screen uh, or the arrow, I see that the 10 period is roughly three cents uh, less than the 20, which is about, oh, we'll call it 27, 28 cents, 27 cents less than the 60. So at the 15 minute time frame, we do actually have a bearish market. So we only had consolidation in the 30 minute level, but the 15 and the one hour were both uh, bearish. And obviously the one day was bullish. So let's kick it back to the one day. We're going to get rid of these moving averages and go to my favorite uh, stochastic um, indicator, which is the MACD. 
And when I look at the MACD, I really am looking for crosses uh, both between the MACD, which is the blue line and the red signal line. And I want to see a cross uh, across what's called known as the zero line down here next to the histogram. Again, if you're not familiar with these uh, indicators, I literally have like a 40 minute tutorial that talks about moving averages, simple moving averages and calculating them. Talks about um, the MACD indicator and why I use it. And it also will uh, cover some Fibonacci analysis and some other stuff. So definitely worth taking a look at if you have not seen it before. But at the daily level, of course, uh, this is no surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that we're seeing continued bullishness on the MACD. But the hour, one hour time frame should be a little more interesting. So um, what happens with the MACD is this. Even though like this here, right, this cross that we got on uh, at 4 p.m. on August 11th, which would have been four days ago, um, that is a significant bearish cross, but we never crossed the zero line. So see how it all just stayed positive. We didn't cross the zero line for three days. Um, if you look at what's what price action did during those three days, if you had gotten in, if you had like sold down here, you would have lost money for several days. In fact, you'd still be out money. If you had sold up here, you would have made money and then figured you lost it, made it again. So it, it's, it's just, it gets a lot more tricky. That's why I like to see a crossover between both the blue and the red, the MACD and the signal line, before I trust that a trend has actually changed its course. Um, when it's just oscillating, but still all positive or below the zero line would be negative, um, I don't trust it. It's just a continuation of the previous trend. Um, by the way, I don't see this as significantly bearish. I want to see these numbers go, or this period that we've seen uh, yesterday and today. I want to see the MACD and the signal line go significantly more negative and before it'll, because we've seen it can cross, hover near the zero line, cross, hover near the zero line. And during this whole period, trend is basically stabilizing. So you're not getting big movements in the trend, which... A means that you might be closer to lose, losing your money. B, you might end up chopping yourself up between buying and then selling and then buying and then selling. So you get chopped up. And then C, you know, if something's not moving, I'm going to move my capital into a product that is so that I can make my money. Like traders get paid off of volatility movement normally. Um, except well, was a good, when I'm trading options, there are some option positions that I put on where I really just want uh, price to stay still because I'm going to make my money that way. But anyway, not withholding uh, that with crypto for sure. I want to see some movement and this really isn't doing it at the one hour level. Let's kick over to the 30 minute. Now I've stated on some other videos, I'm not big on using the MACD at, at the 30 minute time frame. A, it tends to lag sometimes like this crossover here on August the 13th at 8 p.m. If, uh, if you waited for that crossover, you would have actually missed, you would have missed the move already. The move was selling up here, not down here. And in fact, you would have, it would have cost you money. But you see that how, uh, this is a perfect example though. Like over here on the 12th at 11, 11, uh, 11 o'clock, you had a crossover of the, of the uh, red line went higher than the blue line. So the red is the signal line, the blue is the MACD. And it just, you know, a few hours later, uh, went ahead and crossed the zero line. And then we had another crossover, a bullish crossover there on August 12th, and it rode up. So you could use this arguably to make some trades. And then you also see here the kind of oscillations that are nothing more than just uh, an indication that the current trend is continuing. And this is all uh, yesterday and today. It's the weekend. So um, not a whole lot of definitive price movement um, to, to make, you know, to stake your, your, put your stake in the, in the ground on. Let's look at the 15 minute just for consistency's sake. But again, with this many sort of oscillations, like you got the crossover, the bar after this big drop off happened, right? So if you had shorted here, you actually would have lost money, even though the MACD and signal line came on off. And then, uh, it's just been oscillating back and forth. So, 
you know, you have to use all, take in technical analysis with a grain of salt. What I mean by that, trust it, but know, know what you're looking at. Like know how, like everything is so specific to the actual uh, asset that you're trading. So, you know, a moving average crossover strategy might be perfect for say Google and then chop you up on, you know, trading something like Axis or, you know, uh, Polymatic or, or, you know, some of these other uh, technical analysis. You know, you might find that Fibonacci analysis is perfect for, say, currency trading, but will get you chopped up if you're trading commodities. So you just never know. You have to look at every indicator and how uh, price movement is reacting or how that, indi how that indicator reacts to price movement. I don't want the, the, the tail to wag the dog. Um, for the asset you're, you're looking at so that you can use it for uh, positive trades to make money. So here's what I'm noticing with this. And we actually are not going to use, um, uh, we can, we can use a little bit of Fibonacci analysis. Um, normally I would try to look at a larger uh, span of data for the Fibonacci retracement. But what we have in this scenario, I don't know if any of you look at Elliott wave where you'd have like an A, and then a B and then a C a wave and then a D. And you have this scenario where you're getting big moves and then pullbacks. I am going to use a little Fibonacci to get a better sense of how much. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, it's already set up. I want to get a sense uh, of how much retracement is happening each time. So if I look at this first part, we had a pullback. If you look at that pull back down to the 61.8. So 61.8 on the first one. Now we're going to get the second one. And uh, we're going to go from bottom here over there and pull it over. This time around, we only got close to the 50% retracement. And so when you look at where we are now, it's going to go from the bottom of this period to the top here. We actually are at the 38.2%. So imagine a scenario where, you know, so each of these, you've got the 61.8, the 50% and the 38.2. So if this does stay at the 38.2% level and then rebound, go higher, create another leg up, out of, out of just out of the pattern, I would expect the next pullback to only go 23.6. You guys catch that? The first one went down to 61.8. The next highest retracement is 50%. We got that. Sorry, this might be a little too confusing for you guys. But so the main, the key levels for the Fibonacci is 23.6, 38.2. Uh, 50% retracement is not necessarily a Fibonacci number, but it is something that happens uh, often. So we use it as one. And 61.8, then I believe it's 73 uh, roughly 73%. Uh, uh, so, um, and then after that, it's just a full retracement. So this, this pullback was 61.8%. This pullback was 50%. Right now, this one is at the 38.2% level. So if we do manage to rebound from here, um, I would expect another price movement higher for getting decent price movements beyond the previous high, right? So also important to take note of is the fact that it's beyond the previous high each time because that gives us an indication that if we get another if we get another big spike in this you would certainly expect it to push beyond 78.74 does that make sense so um we had price movement top to bottom here we stopped at 28 29.86 we pulled back 61.8 percent of that move then up here we crossed went as high up here as 55 and then we only pulled back to the third to the 50 percent retracement of that move of that move and then we had another move higher which crossed the previous high and from there we only had so far 38.2 percent retracement so let's say price does start to pop and we're at 65, you see prop price go to 70, you probably have a good shot at picking up another $8 if you were to go ahead and get long because each of these other moves, if the pattern repeats, 
has crossed, it's gone higher than the previous high. So those are the sort of things that you can learn from, from uh, technical analysis. You're just looking for patterns to repeat or uh, to, to have a better understanding of how a market is reacting. But rather than just using visual, you want to actually put some statistics, some numbers, uh, some sort of data analysis behind it so that you can get a better expectation of the future. So that's it for, for today's video. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Definitely subscribe to the channel. It inspires me to keep making videos. So thank you guys who keep watching and coming back. Definitely feel free to share the videos as well. And as always, have happy trading this week. Bye-bye.